the way that we perceive the world where we think everything is for us and everything is about us and everything should relate to us is such a weird thing. And how have you sort of seen the narcissism and entitlement play out online, especially um, before you came out with your letter? Mm. Oh, my goodness. Massively, massively. And the thing about this is that, um, and this is where I also exercise compassion, because when you are in those spaces, it's very difficult to see it for what it is. It's very difficult to see it for what it is, because a lot of the time, you truly believe that you are doing the right thing. You know, you hear all about being on the right side of history, right? Um, a lot of the time, you truly believe that you're doing the right thing. And there also needs to be an emphasis on on the fact that there's a kernel of truth in a lot of these things, right? Whether we're talking about movements and speaking up about certain things and people being held to account for actions, um, I nearly found myself saying how to account for harmful actions, but I can't even take the word harmful seriously anymore. Violence. <laughs> violence. It's unfortunate that some of these words, it's like now violence. I'm like, wow, typing is right? violence. Because mm-hmm. they okay. mean they mean very specific things. Yes. And they're said very loosely, but they have real life repercussions. But there's a kernel of truth in all of, in all of these things, all of these movements and the, the way we should be speaking up. However, when it starts to, to get very extreme to the point where it becomes, you know, like a surveillance state, right? Everyone is watching each other. Every single thing you do is being watched and it's being monitored and you're supposed to live up to these really perfect standards. But the, 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 goalpost moves every single day so you you're never really settled because you don't know when things are going to change when terminology is going to change when you know someone is going to um point at you for doing something wrong and then the entire mob is going to come right so the thing is when you are in these spaces you can't really see that it just feels so normal because you're operating from a very righteous place you know, with this idea that you are morally superior and that your job is to find any wrongdoing and put things to right, right? And when you when you really think about that, that is just, it's a trap. It's a trap because there is, there is no such thing as perfection, first of all, and we, we all know that. And we have to understand that the world in which we live in there will be, there's always going to be suffering, for example, whether we want to admit it or not. That's just the truth of the world and the planet that we live on, right? And there's always going to be injustice and inequality. And as long as we're alive, those things will exist, but we need to make sure that we're lessening the suffering and the inequality for people. But the approaches that we take when we're in these spaces where there's no room for asking questions, so simple that there's no room for asking questions there's no room for getting things wrong there's no room for um transformation because there's this idea that who you were 15 years ago five years ago is who you are now so many contradictions there as well because how can we hold people to account if we don't if we're always going to hold that incident over them do we want them to change or do we want to punish them because we're not being honest about something right but yet again, when you are in those spaces, it's very, very difficult to see it in that way. There were so many times where I truly felt that I was doing the right thing. I used an example in my letter of something that happened last year, 2020, when Black Lives Matter, you know, came out in full force for very, very valid reasons. We all know what was happening at the time, but I was very angry. I was very frustrated. And interestingly enough, I had done zero research on any of the cases that were actually out. Nothing, nothing. Like many people, I had done no research, but I had just seen something um, and I was in a very highly emotional state and I just followed the crowd. And that's exactly what happened. You, you, we just follow the crowd. You don't ask any questions. You don't do any research because you're told that you should react. There's no time and space for you to respond because if you take time and space to respond, your silence is violence. So what do you do? 
you react and you go with the crowd. And that's exactly what I did. And because of my unique position at that time as a black person, you know, being told that pretty much black people are being slaughtered all over the globe, I just took in that message and I just reacted. So I remember there was a man that sent me a message and he he was asking me, do you think this is the right way that you should be approaching this? Because I was pretty much joining in the silence is violence train and reposting things that were pretty much shaming white people into action, essentially, right? No room for anyone to process what is going on. Now I have found out about this news. You need to respond now. Because that's, that's usually the case, right? You're supposed to respond when someone else tells you, now is the time. You, you just respond. And he sent me a message. It, he didn't say anything horrible, anything offensive. I, of course, see that now. But he was just asking, is this the best way to, to respond if you want people to actually engage with the conversation? And I took a screenshot of his message and I put it onto my feed. And thousands of people liked it. Thousands of people started berating him. In, in, in my comment section, I got this kind of, it fed my ego. It fed my ego because I had felt like I had done the right thing. How dare this person try to police my anger in this moment in time? And that kind of language, that was the language that I was using at the time. And maybe other people do, but it, it was following the script of what I thought I should say, what I've seen other people say, therefore I should say this. How dare this man? That was another highlighted point. He's a man. And I'm a woman, so how dare he try and tell me how I should respond? Thousands of people were berating him in the comments. And I just watched all of this happen, and it just fed my ego. And it made me feel good. It made me feel good. And this is something that thousands of people have also been telling me over the past months, how good it feels to watch someone else being taken down when you genuinely believe that you are doing the right thing, because that, that's what you believe, right? And the post must have been up for about three hours and about 6,000 people liked it, so many comments, and something just didn't feel right. I had done what I should do, something didn't feel right, but I didn't know what that something was. And then I just, de I just deleted that post straight away but I didn't have the language for it at the time I didn't have the kind of understanding of really how dehumanization works even though it's something that I've been aware of but I just didn't have the language that's what I had done I had dehumanized that person right I had separated him from his humanity taken his action which was not even offensive at all he was simply just asking is this the best way to engage in this very important conversation right and because I didn't have any answer I didn't have an answer for that because I had never been challenged in that way because the echo chambers I was in we all say the same thing we all agree there's no room for challenging if anyone asks a question people will jump on right so I was being challenged in a way that I had never experienced before just by a genuine question it had made me feel extremely defensive so I took down that post and that was the day that I realized that, no, something something is happening here. And I don't know what that something is, but I, I, I don't want to be part of this anymore. Thank you so much for tuning in to Morning Microdose by Almost 30. We hope you enjoyed waking up. As always, we encourage you to take what resonates and leave the rest. If you enjoyed this trip, tune into the full episode on the Almost 30 podcast. All episode information can be found in the show notes. Make sure to subscribe. And if this becomes a part of your morning routine, be sure to share it with a friend. We have new inspiring doses Monday through Friday. Follow us on Instagram at Morning Microdose and follow Almost 30 at Almost 30 Podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the vortex.